Hello and welcome to Connect, the weekly podcast for the California MBA featuring one-on-one -on -one interviews with movers and shakers in the mortgage industry. I'm Susan Malazzo, CEO of the California MBA, and I'm very happy that you could join us today. Uh, before we get to today's guest, I'd like to thank our President's Council sponsors for 2023. These are companies that provide an incredible amount of financial support for the California MBA, um, not the least of which so that we can continue to be a strong voice on uh, legislative issues here in the state of California, very important state in, in, the, in the country, and we're grateful for the support of these companies. Our President's Council this year are, are as, uh, Amerihome, ArchMI, Consolidated Analytics, Funding Shield, Rocket Mortgage, and Western Alliance Bank. Thank you all for your continued support for 2023. We appreciate it. And with that, I'd like to turn to today's guest. I am very pleased to be welcoming Mark Ulmer, EVP of Lending Operations at Freedom Mortgage. Mark, welcome. Thank you, Susan. Great to see you again. Yeah. I. Uh, we have worked together on some legislative issues in the past, so it's always nice to have you. Uh, um, it's very nice to welcome you on to Connect. Um, but I do like to get started uh, with people sharing how they got into the mortgage business. So um, tell us how you how you started out. Well, um, probably like most. Uh, and what I mean by that is that there's not many kids these days who are saying, I want to be a mortgage banker when I grow up. Right. You know? I, I exactly. guess unless your parents own a mortgage company or something, you know. Uh, something like that but i'll tell you how much i was unaware uh i remember being in high school grew up in san bernardino california and um i it was it was a summer day i was at our church we were out in the parking lot we had a basket out there we were playing basketball we were tired sat down and i looked across the street there was a strip center and there was this place that i had seen over the years it's called countrywide funding and i looked up there and on the you know the, the guys with me i just said hey do you know what this means and he goes what he says i said well it says faha va and kamd what is that <laughs> supposed to mean of course later i found out that's fha va and conventional all right so i mean growing up you didn't hear about home lending mortgages or any of that kind of stuff you know you you live someplace and your parents figured it out and so um as it turns out went to college got out of college, no idea what I wanted to do. I got into sales, but a good buddy of mine from when we were kids uh, was working at the Savings and Loan, Santa Fe Federal Savings in San Bernardino. It was like the biggest SNL, and he was a loan rep, and he was making what I thought was tremendous money. And I knew he wasn't brilliant, okay? <laughs> and so it's like, <laughs> that sounds bad, but it was like, gosh, what's this guy doing? You know, is this legal and stuff? And so he says, you got to come over here and interview, you know? So I went there one time and <clears throat> I didn't get hired. I went back a second time and they said, look, we're going to pay you a, a draw of $750 a month, straight commission. Uh, you owe it back at the end of the month if you haven't earned that much in commission. And at the end of three months, if you uh, haven't, uh, if you haven't made at least $3,000, you know, we're going to fire you. And I just said, bring it on. I said, you know, I, I, I want, I'm very interested in seeing what's going on. And what I didn't know at the time, because I knew nothing about this business, uh, we were at 11 and 5 eighths and one and a half points. Uh, that was the pricing at the time, <laughs> right at the time. I think informing was about 93,750 or something. And, um, and by December, it was almost 18%. But I had like my biggest month in December because I just, I really love the business. I, I love the analytical part, the working with customer part. It was harder to find customers, but guess what? There's always opportunities in every market. Sometimes you just have to work really hard to find them. And uh, everybody else was quitting because like nobody will get these loans, but you know, actually there were loans out there that people did want still. And so that's how I got in the business. That's a, that's a, that's a great story. What is Faha? <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Well, right. That's a true story. <laughs> So you make a make a good comment. You know there is opportunity in every market. I I truly believe that as well. What are what are you and Freedom most focused on in today's market? Well, um, you know some things change, some things don't change. And I think you know first of all we we service almost two million 
customers now, almost 2 million loans. And uh, we are a market leader, have been a market leader in retaining our customers. So number one focus is continue to look out for those customers that have, have joined us. Um, and that customer base and our servicing portfolio has, you know, I think it's increased, you know, 10 times since I've been there um, yeah, the last seven years. So huge growth. But the big part is, you know, how well are we going to service them? And then at the same time, uh, we got to look out for them. So what are the opportunities for them? Because we want them to stay with us. If they're going to have a mortgage, we want them to stay with Freedom. And so uh, second thing is probably really continuing to <clears throat> enhance our technology, our self-serve capability, uh, mobile apps, all those kinds of things. And uh, <clears throat> here's the thing we know. We're, we're not market makers. Um, but uh, what we do know is there's an opportunity in every market cycle. So what we want to be able to do is take advantage of what the market gives us. And so one of the things that we're always focused on is we are always right-sizing ourselves for the market. So I know the industry has been going through absolute turmoil. I mean, look, you know, volumes have dropped 90%, you know, in a right. lot of places. And, uh, you know, so we're always focused on quickly adjusting to take advantage of those opportunities, you know, whether it's a streamlined, you know, conventional rate and term type of market, uh, but we're always in a purchase market. So we always want to be taking advantage and growing that. And today it's really a cash out market. So make yourself um, financially size right for what the market you're in, take advantage of that and keep getting better. I think that the other really big thing that we're working on that maybe most aren't, they're still reeling from the last refi wave we had. And I'll say that last wave, by far, it's the biggest wave I've ever seen. I don't know that there will be another one because rates went lower than they've ever been. Right. And they got there kind of unnaturally. And I mean that by saying, yeah, look, we had a pandemic. Government stepped in. They're going to buy all the loans we can originate and great stability in pricing and execution. So, you know, we probably were not going to see anything like that, um, right. at least while I'm working. But uh, what we're doing right now, we're preparing for the next refi wave. And that's what we're spending a lot of time on because here's one thing all the years I've been working is that, you know, the industry does not do a good job scaling up. You know, what it is, what does it mean? We have to hire a bunch of people. And then what happens when volume goes the other way? We let go of a lot of people. Yeah. And um, a lot of people get into this business when, you know, astronomical salaries are being paid and get them in there, you know, but then the flip side happens and it's, it's brutal. So, so what we're doing, <clears throat> if I just back up a few years, the last time we had before this last, um, you know, refi wave that we hit was about 2016, call it that, 15, 16. From that point to 2020, 21, we were able to improve our, our productivity um, fourfold. Okay, so if I could wow. do 10, I could now do 40, you know. And we're working for, I want another fourfold or quadruple productivity gain. And that's really through the technology we continue to develop, our process improvements, our, our really focusing on our customers, uh, and then just people readiness, you know, and, and all those things. So we're spending a good amount of our time. A lot of, I, I guess, personally, more of my time is being spent on making sure that next time we're even better prepared because our customers, they need it and they deserve it. And if they don't, they're going someplace else. And that yeah. totally defeats the business model. Yeah, focused on uh, creating those customers for life, right? This is a good, uh, that's a good, it's a good focus right now in today's market. Yeah, we're still like in football playoffs right now. And the way we look at it is that we got to have a playbook that we're ready to call the play. Everybody knows what they're going to do and go execute. And so that's what we're spending a lot of time on. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. And, you know, yeah. so Freedom's, of course, recognized as one of the top mortgage lenders in the country, uh, for sure. But you're, the company also does some incredible philanthropic work. Can you talk with us a little bit about what the company does in that area? Yeah, you know, I appreciate you um, asking that question because it is something that um, I think it, it's, it's great to be with a company that is thinking about that. And that goes back to our owner, Stan Middleman. Uh, he founded the company, CEO of the company. Uh, there's another company probably our size where you've still got the founder own, and he still owns the company. You know, everybody else has gone public or what have you. And so really, we 
have been holding really four major philanthropic campaigns uh, where we really look for employee engagement. And, uh, and we have a group uh, or really uh, an arm inside of our company called Team Freedom Cares, okay? And so I'll just hit the four that we've done and continue to do, um, not in a particular order. The first thing is, you know, we are and have been, um, at least the last few years, the number one VA lender in the country, and we are the number one FHA lender here for a bit. And so um, we, we do a couple of things really focused on um, VA and, and really USO, so our veterans and our, our, our service people. And so the first thing is called Project Gratitude. This is where um, we ask all of our employees to create either you know, handwritten notes or record a video. And those all get sent to active duty service members through the USO globally. Uh, I think we had about 7,500 of those that have been sent out so far. So that's, you know, I've been told uh, from other folks who are veterans in our our company just saying, look how much they really appreciate that. It doesn't seem like a big thing. It's actually a very big deal, you know. So that's something we do. Hey, look, that didn't take money, right? That just takes a little bit of time and some thoughtfulness. Yeah, some time and effort, yeah. Yeah. Uh, another thing that we do is something called rucksacks to backpacks, and this is a collection drive and an online fundraiser where we help provide. Um, we've helped provide like over twenty-six thousand backpacks. So think about kids going to school, they want a backpack. So we buy backpacks and then we had over 68,000 school supplies to oh, fill wow. in those backpacks. And once again, we work that back through the USO. And so, I mean, there's years where, especially when we are in the office, go buy a boatload of backpacks, you know, bring them in or a boatload of supplies. And a lot of times here, most recently, it's been easier online to donate five bucks or donate ten dollars or something like that but it really all adds up um another big thing that we've done is feeding america food drive you know um this has been this is a very big deal and and really we went um much further than we've ever gone before during the pandemic but to date we've donated over 132,000 cans of uh of food and almost one and a half million dollars that would uh, feed over 14 million meals is what it turns out to be through feeding america and their food banks and then the 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 last uh one of our four uh drives that we do is a holiday toy drive so this is really you know collecting getting toys for underserved youth uh during the holiday seasons so to date i think it's nearly 63,000 toys have been donated to various charities such as Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, the Salvation Army, and Toys for Tots. And so those have really been, you know, uh, four big things. Now we also do other things that happen intermittently, but those have been kind of the four big ones. And even recently, uh, actually it just happened the other day, uh, Real Leaders, uh, if you've heard of that, uh, there, there's an impact award that they give out. And so there's, um, as it turns out, there's about Three, you know, there's 300 award winners, and uh, and these are all kinds of companies worldwide, and a variety of industries that are just really being recognized as being aware of their impact on employees, society, and really the planet. In addition to their bottom line, so uh, I think we were the number 24 out of 300 that got recognized. Wow! Uh, so that, that's a neat one. We've had several others, but that was that was kind of cool. Yeah. That is incredible. And what incredible charities that you've chosen too. Those are all um, extremely well worth it. And kudos to Freedom for being so so active and giving and, and being mindful of, of being charitable. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I, it's it's a great group of people and, you know, you do a little bit of that stuff. And I mean, we, we do inten, in, uh, internal competitions, but we recognize it, it's it's really turns out to be a, a really good morale booster too. Kind of make it make it kind of fun too. So so Freedom definitely takes care of uh, of communities in which they serve, but it sounds like you also take care of your employees because I believe the company has been in multiple years voted one of the best places to work, which is uh, also a great uh, a nod to to Stan's leadership. But uh, what can you tell us about the corporate culture that creates that type of an environment? Well, um, yeah, I appreciate that question too, because really, 
and especially in the remote work environment that we've been a part of, you know, the last several years, which is becoming now really the way we operate uh, when you think about it, unless you're in a licensed role that you must be inside or you have to deal with paper or something, this, this remote workforce has really become, you know, more and more typical um, for us. And so, so I already mentioned like the, the giving back through um, Team Freedom Cares. I mean, that's one thing that I think from a culture standpoint, we really try to instill. Um, we, we, we have really worked to try to strive to create a, a work-life balance. Uh, that's a hard thing to do in this business sometimes, you know, and, uh, but it, it's, been a, it's been a focus of ours. Um, we're, I would say we um, have really done a lot and I've really tried from a leadership standpoint uh, to ensure that we have consistent and transparent uh, communication. You know, and that, that starts kind of with Stan uh, on messages that go out and, you know, how we've used Zoom calls and how we've created town halls and, you know, one-on-one -on -one sessions and stuff. That, that's been very important because if you're working out of your home, you know, there's a lot to be thought about when it comes to, you know, what's really going on. I'm not here inside the office to hear right. kind of what's going on. Um, you gotta feel a part of still, yeah. You really do. Um, we've you know, worked to encourage our employees to make suggestions on how we can make things better, faster, cheaper. <laughs> you know, those things we're always focused on. And uh, it's like, I'm not going to come up with every idea. You know, I mean, we really need to have that, uh, especially with our frontline uh, employees. And so big impact there. I think it makes them feel a lot more uh, involved knowing they're, they're being heard. Um, just employee recognition, you know, a lot of the things are, there, there might be some monetary part of it, but a lot of times it's, it's peer group recognition and people who are doing a great job, especially from a customer uh, experience standpoint. We have, we have a mentorship program, which I think is uh, great that we've stepped up and we've really tried to make that available. And a lot of members of our leadership team are involved with that. And then, you know, I just think we're really focused on promoting from within. Now, mm. we've kind of been going the opposite way, right? Because of just where volume is gone and, and just, account. but you know, we've grown in servicing. We've been able to move people from origination into servicing. So, you know, we really are trying to look to, um, just from a culture standpoint, not deal in a silo, but really look end to end and across the board. And then, you know, uh, where opportunities come up, just because they're working my group, they might be great for somebody else's group. We want to make sure that we're sharing that and making sure we're working across the company instead of just, you know, siloed. And I know a lot of places that that's a big deal. Right. And that, I mean, that creates a lot of great opportunities for your employees. Like you say, when you're, you know, when one side of the industry origination or servicing is higher than the other, you can have that flexibility to go to either side. So great. It sounds like uh, it's whatever you're doing, it's definitely working all those years of recognition for being one of the best places to work. So, uh, you know, you've had a long history in the in this industry. Um, what advice would you give a young mortgage professional to starting out? Well, um, and I do get the chance to mentor others, you know, and so, and actually I've got a, a young guy right now who is with a, he's with another mortgage company. You know, he's not even in our mortgage company, but wow. he was a fr he's, he's a friend of my son's and, you know, and he happens to be in the business. So, you know, so the, this mentoring doesn't just have to be, you know, your group. It can really expand. Right. But when I talk to him and I talk to others, I, I just tell him, I said, first of all, you know, you've got to own your career. You know, don't wait for somebody else to do it. You may not like the outcome. Right. <laughs> a lot of times people get started with a place and they think like, oh, I'm going to get moved along and everything. Well, look. You need to recognize what you're good at, what you like, uh, which you've been given some positive reinforcement of things that you're doing that work. And so you need to be thinking about, OK, what does this look like for me and where do I want to go? Where can I see myself? So if, if you're not thinking about it, don't expect somebody else to think about it. I mean, we'll try and do that. But just I know for me personally, I, I, I made a lot of job changes, you know, because I just felt like I had to move things along. And the people I was working for didn't, they weren't that interested in helping me move along. I finally got to a place that we synced up great. And then I was there for a long time. So, so that's one thing. I think another big thing, and this is just personally speaking, learn the business end to end. You know, there's a, there's a whole ecosystem that goes on in this business. 
you know, you need to read, you need to ask questions, know how things work. If you're not inquisitive, if you don't have intellectual curiosity, you know, you're probably not going to advance as far as you think you'd like to. Uh, I think the MBA is probably a great resource for for a lot of that kind of information, I would think, uh, Susan, you know, so, but, you know, years ago when I was young in this business, it was, it was hard to find stuff that anything I could grab my hands on, I would read. I mean, the seller servicer guide, I got a hold of one one time. I just read it cover to cover trying to understand everything, you know? And That's so, and I had jobs along the way where I was the chief loan officer of a brand new savings and loan one time. And I would originate the loans. I would underwrite the loans. I would fund the loans. I would sell the loans one loan at a time to Freddie Mac. I even had to go file the notice of default on a loan to wow. go foreclose. So that that kind of experience, you know, you draw on that. And if you're really interested in progressing, understand it end to end. No, no, no. I think that's great advice. And I think that sometimes, um, you know, a lot of times when I talk with some of our lenders, they get very, you know, their employees tend to get really kind of focused on just the thing that they do. But they don't yeah. understand like how does compliance work with that and how does underwriting you can't do that originator because the, you know there is an underwriting reason or compliance reason that you know that's that's not the direction we need to go. So I think that's great advice. Yeah, that that's exactly it. And look, yeah, I just say I just tell them, you got to outwork everybody else. You got to be willing to take some chances. You you got to ask the why questions. It's not just what you can do, but understand why it is because as you understand more about the why it'll make you more valuable and people will start to look at you different uh, than maybe the job that you're in um yeah and i'll just also say go get yourself a good mentor or multiple mentors you know i've i've had people along the way that have really been beneficial you know and you go through different seasons in your life where your mentor needs to be a little bit different you know and Sometimes people I'm mentoring wind up mentoring me back. <laughs> and so it's, I, I think it's all, learn, it's right? all, yeah. Here's the last thing I'll tell you is that, um, you know, if you're going to be a good leader, you need to know yourself, you know, and, um, and I think if you want to get in management, a lot of people think, oh, that's the progression you get in management. Just do it for the right reason. If you ever recall Zig Ziglar, do you, you remember this guy, yeah. Zig Ziglar? Oh, yeah. he was, says you can get everything in life you want if you help enough other people get what they want. You know, what I've just found the bottom line is if you focus on making everyone else on your team better, then you don't have to worry about yourself. So right. if you've got more of that, you know, servant leadership, selfless attitude around it, and you focus on that, it, it really does pay back. So I, I know that's a lot, probably more than you wanted, but those are just things that came to mind for me. No, I, I think that that's all great advice. I mean, definitely find those mentors and, uh, you know, draw on their experiences and help develop your professional path because that's uh, that's the way you'll find out. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, you've always been a big supporter of the California MBA, Mark, and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Um, but can you share with our listeners why you, uh, why you support the California MBA? Well, you know, it's... Uh... Kind of simple. Uh, California is the largest mortgage market in the country. Has been, probably will be. You know, we make the biggest loan amounts, and uh, and you just look at the size of the state. So the legislative policy coming out of Sacramento, it's just it's critical as for the industry, and we need a coalition to support, you know, to look out for our interests as well as the interests of borrowers. And I just really think that a lot of times politicians. They think they're doing something positive for their constituents without knowing it could actually harm them. I mean, if, if you're right. familiar with uh, when New York foreclosure law just got popped here at the beginning of the year, this governor signed it in. And, you know, I'm sure they think this is great for our, you know, for our citizens here and, um, you know, everybody who lives in this state. But in fact, it's going to take away competition. It's going to hurt them. And so I just think the CNBA is our voice. You know, we all can't be in Sacramento, you and all the work you've done, your team, they you just play a vital role in helping us formulate policies and laws to govern the state. And so, you know, and then you, know, you guys also, along with us, we work with the NBA and all the members to influence, you know, federal legislation and uh, the various mortgage investors and regulators. So I just think, you know, that's, that's why, you know, it's, it's a big ecosystem and there's a lot of participants 
And uh, there's huge impact that happens that actually the MBA is just on the forefront and they're the ones that really help us get things done that are really good for the industry. So that's why the support is there. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. The advocacy is definitely the cornerstone of our association. And uh, Mark, thank you for being on Connect today. It's been great to have you. Thanks, Susan. Been great talking to you and uh, wish you well this year. And thanks to all of you for joining us on today's episode of Connect. To access any of our episodes, you can follow us on our YouTube channel. We're also available on SoundCloud, Apple Podcast, and Spotify. That's it for this week on Connect, and we'll see you next time.